Welcome back to New Am Sam Radio, the podcast for creatives. It is I, Flavor Boys, the mayor, hanging in the mayor's office in a very, very special episode. You see, a couple of weeks ago, I got into the world of NFTs and had decentricity on the show to talk about what that means. And well, people came up to me in droves and was like, huh? That's why we're doing it one more time. Decentralicity is back, but she is not alone because as she is the uh, acting CEO of the DeepIO network, also using blockchain technology, she's brought some friends, Danny Gaultier and Josh Powell from Myriad Social to talk about the advancements of the blockchain and what that means. Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much. Hello, Bravo. <laughs> it's, it's been, been a, a long minute. time. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a long time. And so I said a mouthful, but let's cut through all of that. The Bio Network and Myriad Social are two different organizations, two different companies, outfits, if you will, that use a block tech technology. Ponzi, walk me through this. What does the bio, what does that really mean to someone who has no idea what that possibly could mean? Sure. Yeah. So it's the decentralized bio network. So what we do is we provide users with anonymous genetic testing services and biomedical testing services. Oh. And uh, we empower labs to basically be able to sell biomedical and genetic testing in a digital marketplace on a blockchain. And we actually created a, a, a new pathway to monetize your personal biomedical data based on NFTs. It's bioinformatics NFTs, basically. So, so informatics. See, now that is kind of cool because I think now more than ever, we always want to know what are we made of? What are we susceptible to? Especially now in the throes of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's, uh, there's actually, your genome is unique. NFTs are all unique. Why not NFT your genome? That's oh, that's like is. unique squared, bro. <laughs> I love it. That is, that is bro. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> and, 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 and Myriad Social is a social network that is unique in its own way. Is it not, fellas? Well, it is. It is really well. What's happening here is that um, we, we've been looking at social media for quite a while now, and uh, we've been seeing that uh, the current social media landscape is something of an oligar oligarchy. Um, and there is a lot of control that's, uh, that's been centralized to uh, really a handful of actors that, that can decide on a whim um, what, what you should say, what you should not say, what you should sell, what you should not sell. Um, as, as a creative myself, even if I don't uh, get myself uh, too much under the spotlight, uh, I relate, for instance, a lot about what happens on YouTube, for instance, where a lot of creators are demonetized sometimes for, for, for trifles. Um, and there, there have been a lot of, um, I'm going to say, uh, uh, controversy happening. Uh, concerning other other major social media when it comes to uh, letting people speak or not. For, for various reasons. I don't want to get into politics because at this point, it's uh, it's really a nonpartisan issue. Uh, you have billions of users who use those uh, media platforms to to get their information and to, um, to, um, to communicate, to advocate their ideas and to have, um, I'm going to say um, a, a bottleneck and, and one almost unique um, decisional power uh, trying to, uh, to apply their own standards to this full uh, 2 billion and plus plus people is uh, to us is not quite right. So uh, what's, what's making us unique is that we're, we're not just decentralized. So we are decentralized. It's a network that aimed at being owned by its community to, to begin with. So no one single person with uh, a big server or a big heap of servers going, hey, this is mine, this is my hardware, my infrastructure, my rules, right? Yeah. Uh, but a lot of people who contribute to maintaining uh, the infrastructure and the network itself, and it's federated, meaning that if you have uh, if you have a server slash a node, um, you might choose to maintain it in in uh, in a way that's different from Josh or Pandus, because you have different standards when it comes to communication and what to allow on your server or not to allow on your server, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. So people can people can look at the network uh, globally and see what happens everywhere. 
just at your server or just as a couple uh, at a couple of servers. Um, that plus the fact that it belongs to its community because um, because of the Miria token that we use to actually uh, have a way to steer uh, the development of, of the platform uh, through something we call a DAO, which is has nothing to do with the DAO thing, but it's a uh, um, decentralized autonomous organization. And, and through that, um, there is there is a real ownership, right? You can you can vote with uh, more or less. Yeah, I'm simplifying that, but you can vote with your tokens, and knowing like okay, the actually uh, the fees uh, the network takes on tipping because we can tip each other on on Myriad. We can even tip people who are not on Myriad. Uh, we can talk about it later. But like if the fees are too high, uh, some someone can say, hey, the the rent is too damn high. Uh, just lower it. <laughs> and we can, you know, we can all vote for this. Uh, and even even at several level, if you have your community on your server, that's uh, that, that that has its own way of life and communication and stuff. You can issue your own token, have your own DAO, and and choose of choose your governance. So I understand that those terms are are kind of foreign for people who are not into the crypto world. If you have any questions, so so we can you know clarify a little bit uh, how it's it's all about. You you're welcome to ask anything. Yeah, let's let's break this down. Uh, a lot of these will unpack, especially for those who are getting into what that is. And the the main through line seems to be decentralization. Right, the our concepts we're familiar with. I know social networks. I have Facebook. I know about medical solutions. I have a doctor. But this is really something that is a whole different plan of being able to own whatever it is. And in one case, whether it is your medical information or whether whether it is your social media network, how do you guys approach that when you're developing your companies? Well, uh, yeah. Josh. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I, I kind of wanted to bring both those both those ideas together. The the uh, you know the the genome project that she's working on, and then the the Myriad social network as well. The because uh, just on on YouTube, for instance, uh, just just talking about cryptocurrency or um, NFTs can get your channel instantly banned while you're live streaming. If you're just just those keywords will get you banned from YouTube just for saying them. If you wow. know, if you, if you if you do a live stream, there's been prominent YouTubers that have had to make large social media campaigns to get their to get their channels unblocked from just because they were talking about Dogecoin and how it was how it was you know uh, taking off or something because because Google um, or I guess YouTube separately from Google <laughs> um, yeah. um, just decided that you can't talk about that. So yeah. so I mean that's, that's pretty scary when you have you know. You don't really have people watching broadcast television anymore. You know, YouTube is most people's broadcast television, and if you can't talk about something, then it doesn't exist on the platform. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't know that. That's scary, actually. <laughs> You're like, hey, look what I found. Oh, I've been banned. Well. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, it, and it wasn't. It wasn't like the video was taken down. Like their whole channel was just gone. Oh, and wow. then they had to. They had. Oh, so they right. had to start all. You could probably Google it. If it's, it's actually a prominent lawyer who's a, who 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 does who does law law videos, and they uh, so they were just talking about the legal aspects of Dogecoin, and then their whole channel was gone, and they had to start a large social media campaign to. Yeah. So so, Pen, let me ask you a question, uh, yeah. especially when it when it comes to because it's not just the genome project, the genome mapping uh, with the Dubai. It's a, it's so much more applications there. You know, when we talk talk about our health, especially for most of us in the world who are locked in their apartment or house for a year, uh, I think now it's more personal than ever. You know, and safety is a concern. Uh, how do you let people know that this is actually a safe option to take control of their whatever their medical uh, application? Would be when it comes to using your platform. Right, right. Um, I think all of these applications, the key is the user experience uh, and uh, we are competing with uh, larger corporations. Uh, so again, speaking back to decentralization, mm -hmm. um, the way that our companies are created is in a way that is uh, owned by the community. Actually, Danny mentioned this earlier, DAO, DAO, which is a decentralized autonomous organization. That's the way all of our companies are structured or will be structured. Um, and these are um, 
these are basically community owned companies, uh, which are all managed and governed by token holders, people who are holding tokens. Now, that that is actually going going back to uh, what Josh said about, about like uh, people talking about Dogecoin getting banned. Um, they might be going at it, like taking the stance of YouTube and Google for a moment. They might be going at it from like, oh, this is a scam. We need to shut this down. But the thing is, um, if you take uh, another look at it, uh, a lot of these tokens are, 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 are used for governance, are used to actually control networks and are used to actually control these DAOs, these, this, 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 these organizations uh, that we're setting up. So um, it is a whole new way. Like it started with a new kind of money, right? With Bitcoin, like 10, 11 years ago. Sure. Uh, now it's not just the economy, it's governance as well, the governance of corporations and the governance of like these, uh, and, and again, we're not a corporation, we're a DAO, which means that uh, we're not controlled by one person, we're not controlled by even like a, a small group, an oligarchy of persons, we're, we're controlled by the community then. Now that's, that's, that's scary, arguably, for a lot of these companies. And um, in the genetics industry, that is actually something that we've identified uh, as problems. There's been a ton of cases. I'm not going to mention names. I'm not going to mention companies. I'm not going to mention corporations. But there's been like accusations of uh, companies selling data without the consent of the genome owners and uh, selling them to pharmacogenetics companies who use these genomes and monetize them by creating pharma products. And uh, that that is not getting back, like it's not flowing back to the users at all. Not even, it, the, the users don't even give consent to actually the, the, get the data be used. So that, that you mean, starts you mean you didn't, from you that. Didn't read, you didn't read the entire 30 page uh, user agreement before you? Oh, before dude, you... yeah, no, we skipped it. Scroll like, yeah, down, that. That. Cheers, scroll you down. didn't? <laughs> Danny really it was in your that. terms and conditions, guys, come on. <laughs> I got it tattooed on my back. I love this. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 what started it all. And uh, but going back, user experience is key because a lot of these new companies, a lot of these new decentralized companies, are very user unfriendly. And if you go there, like if you know about DeFi, if you've been doing a lot of like NFTs as well, you've seen that there's a ton of like shitty. I hope I'm allowed to say that on air, but yeah. like yeah, a lot of shitty NFT. Uh, You're demonetized. <laughs> yes. Oh, damn it. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. So, um, so what we do with the Debio network is focus on the user experience of like the people who are who need these tests. So, uh, we focus on at-home testing actually. So, instead of actually having people come to your house, you can take like you can source your own cotton bud, uh, certain kinds of cotton buds without chemicals, and then like you just swap the insides of your cheeks. And those are buckle swabs, like within like your cheek, like ten each side. And then like you put them in a sample bottle, which is easily sourced as well. Put them in an envelope that you can get in a post office, and similar to a Swiss bank account, like Swiss bank accounts, you you don't put in your name. It's just like basically a code, which is both right. your name and your account number. So basically, just put in that code, like put that code on the envelope, and then like the application tells you which lab to send to, or you yeah. choose one of the labs, basically. Then like you, you send it to the lab, the lab basically ex, uh, receives it, puts in like the Swiss bank account. And right. uh, yeah, you stay at home. You don't have to leave anywhere. You probably have to leave to like mail it, just put it in your mailbox, probably just walk out. And, uh, and you basically get a genome report back through the blockchain and through the blockchain in an encrypted fashion, encrypted with your own public key, which means you're the only one who can decrypt it through your private key. So, um, that ease of use is how we're starting it. And uh, additionally, the data that you receive is data that you can later do staking on, which means like the data is put in a place where it is aggregated and sold together with other sets of data of a similar nature. So it would be an aggregated set of data of genomes um, and uh, people can filter based like on gender, on race, et cetera. And uh, that is sold in a data marketplace. That data marketplace is something that we're partnering with, uh, but we're also running basically the aggregation of the data and we're also running the compute of the data. 
which means like if someone buys that set of data, uh, a lab, for example, like one of those pharmacogenetics companies, when they run their algorithms, they run their algorithms on our premises. So we basically run something called the Kubernetes cluster, uh, mm -hmm. basically a, a bunch of compute nodes. And okay. uh, the algorithms they send us basically gets run on our premises, doesn't leave the place. So uh, the data never gets out, which means all the results uh, are computed, but never leaves the premises. And anyway, in our premises even, we don't even have access to the KYC because that Swiss bank account thing uh, doesn't require KYC. It just requires basically your wallet, your, your blockchain wallet address. It is what we call permissionless. Right. That is so, what we buy in us. Oops. So it's, it's, <laughs> there's, there's a little layer of anonymity being able to control what you want to see without having to put your name out there. There's a, there's a bunch of unique string that a person can enter. So that way they don't know what their information is, which I like. Right. I think that's one of the, one of the major through lines of decentralized, whether it's finance, whether it's biomed, it's the idea of being able, you don't have to subscribe to a certain country or a person or a name. I like that. But in the case yeah. of say, in the case of say like um, groups, like, like if you want to see like your ancestral line or a myriad social, you want to get your, your friends and family out there, how do you get people to be on board with an application that really promotes being anonymous? So just, just for the ancestral line, I, uh, it's all, it all depends on, con uh, on whether you allow it, right? Like uh, whether you allow access to it and uh, that is where the control lies. So here's the thing, I'd like to have a way to know who my ancestors are without actually revealing my own name into like the matrix, <laughs> into right, like right. that, 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 you know, that TikTok matrix. So I, uh, but like if I find my relatives like on that platform, on like the Bio platform, um, I, if they have, con uh, they, give, they give permission and I give permission, then we can, uh, you know, the sun each other or KYC peer to peer, like with even without using the platform itself. So um, that actually carries over to a lot of things, and Danny will probably be able to talk more about that. Um, if you give permission to actually access uh, this set of data, um, there needs to be a way for that permission to be um, um, maintained in a way that it's only given permission to the people who are originally getting the permission and not like you know, uh, more people down the line. And also uh, in terms of data aggregation, if you aggregate data, it needs to be in a way that is also very permission. Like if you put like precious, valuable data in one place, these days a lot of the big data companies just take. We don't do mm. that. We try not to do that. Uh, that's ingrained in our DNA and our smart contracts. Everything is auditable later on. And uh, yeah, that's 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 the philosophy of the entire space. Uh, that's how where the creativity creativity also comes from. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a key part of it. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, for sure. And, and I guess uh, to, to re, I re, uh, rephrase my question for a myriad social, you know, people will say that social media is dead, man. It's not real, man. Like it's not the whole thing. Everyone's trying to get off this get off platforms and unplug but this is something that's a cool idea that you really want people to get involved in so that you can have a little bit of a community what's been your approach then to, to to mediate that the the social media fatigue while launching a brand new application so the thing is um if if anyone tells you that social media is dead um well you can you can just answer like so why are they still here I mean, it's uh, it's very probable that You're social right. media isn't isn't dead at all, and not not only it's very alive, but it's uh, it's thriving, and it's it's thriving on uh, right now controversy. It's uh, I, I see it right now like uh, traditional social media is a big uh, big bad hatred machine. Uh, we have a cycle uh, with with a lot of uh, what we call what what I call rage rage bait uh, headlines. When people, you know, like yeah, social media are looking for engagement, right? Uh, what what you want if you have one big uh, social platform is people to stay there. And it's been proven scientifically that people share and discuss things that make them angry uh, more than anything else. You have, you have two feelings that come on the top uh, when it comes to sharing uh, news or topics. It's, uh, it's awe and anger. 
but it's much easier to make someone angry than to uh, mm -hmm. to, to do something all inspiring, right? All inspiring things take a lot of effort. Uh, I know I tried. <coughs> so anyway, yeah, what what's what's happening here? That the the current climate of uh, people constantly uh, dissing each other on on the internet and in comment section and stuff is the proof that actually social media is is really really active. And it's really, really influential in, in, in our everyday life. It has it has an impact on our day-to-day -day society and on, on our day-to-day -day interaction that is extremely real. And um, so what, what we want what we want to do and, and uh, a, a reason why also we, cre we created that is to try to, to drive a, a debate that's um, to elevate the debate a little bit uh, to encourage communication, to encourage uh, community bonds, rather than just ask people to come and fight in the comment section. Now, uh, you mentioned anonymity. In any case, uh, this is this is an anonymity or pseudonymity, right? Meaning, like uh, my my name could be uh, uh, Valiant Cucumber or something like that. I would still have an identity on the network. I'd be pseudonymous, right? Uh, you can see it, for instance, on Reddit, when you you're not you're in, you're not obliged to have your your real name. Uh, that's needed because, like, uh, I don't I don't know how many countries, for instance, uh, where it's illegal to be uh, to be gay. Uh, mm -hmm. Forty forty odd countries, as as far as I remember, I, I could be wrong, but don't cook me on that. But what about if you uh, if you want to advocate for uh, for gay rights in in your country where it's it's actually illegal to to be gay? Uh, do you use your real name? Uh, I, I know that in, in my country of origin, I'm French, uh, there was a time where, where Facebook uh, asked for your, your ID card when, when you registered to confirm the validity of your, um, you know, of, of your account. So what other countries do that? What can you say? What can you not say on this kind of social media? So you need pseudonymity, at least pseudonymity to protect speech. Um, but as Pandu said, this is also a choice. Um, on on Myriad, if you if you want to, to call yourself uh, Jean Daniel Gauthier, as, as my name is, or Pandu Sastro you you can you can do that. And uh, if you want to gather a social clout, or if you want to gather tips and cryptocurrencies, uh, build a reputation, be the owner of a node that you will foster and 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 grow into something, you know, strong and meaningful. You you can do it under your your real name too. And I think this is uh, this is the crux of it, really. Uh, the uh, community aspect and the, the way you give people choice to actually adhere to a community or another. So uh, if, if I can take like some, some extra time, I'm sorry, and I'm lengthy. Um, well, it's I, something you're yeah. passionate about, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we will want to hear, you know, it's, it's all about startups, it's all about creativity. If you don't like that product, you just can just make one that's better, you know. Um, and yeah, okay, I don't like Facebook, so I'm going to make a better one. How? Like they have they have all, all the funds in the world. They have all the budget in the world. They have thousands of developers. They have data centers everywhere. How, how do you do that? Now, you're on Myriad, right? What's happening is... Uh, we're not Facebook, but we, we have a community and, and a community of developers. And like everything open source, these things, you know, they snowball positively and they grow and they tend to grow in something magnificent. Just look at Linux. I mean, you know, for instance. Right. And from us, from Myriad, what we, what we do, the approach we give is like uh, uh, you adhere to, you subscribe to, uh, to a server. Okay, and, and and you don't like what's on this server, right? You 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 want to try to do your own. Well, now you can. I mean, you can just get some some stuff on the cloud, uh, do your little setup, or ask your geeky friend to 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 make a setup for you, and you're and you're there, and you're there. I'm, I'm your geeky friend. I'm exactly. <laughs> Hi, geeky yeah, friend. Yeah, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> But I I just want to build on what he was saying about about uh, everyone's always angry. Like that's that's what drive. I mean, engagement is what drives social media, right? Everyone wants you to like, share, and subscribe, and comment, and all that stuff because that drives. Well, what do people comment on if you say I like what you did? Nobody says anything else after that. Or <laughs> right, if you right. say I hate everything about you, then that starts a discussion, right? <laughs> so 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 there's you know a, 
with with this one now you can if if there's a toxic you know environment that you're that you're part of you can just go be a part of a different environment that's not a toxic environment and you can also thank people you know with the uh, um you know with with the uh the tokens right so, you know and so, so you know you can you can filter you know be able to filter you know based on tokens so if something is really good and everyone's tipping for that content then you'll see that content first versus the content where there is 14 arguments in the comment section i can imagine people listening now perked up like tipping tell me more uh because you were saying that mirrored social has a tipping platform baked in and then you don't have to be on mirrored social to get tips if you're an artist or a creative person can you talk more about that yeah i'll show you for the bull guy <laughs> how you do. so basically if you if you want to support my lame little joke i just did right now uh if you were in Europe, that was cool right? <laughs> that was really good <laughs> go, go ahead don't let us if stop you, uh, any. <laughs> if you're on myriad you would just have a little button to press and um and if you have any cryptocurrency that's compatible with the platform we want to integrate as many as many as we can so let's say you have some ethereum you have some bitcoin you have some uh, some dot you have some 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 whatever uh whatever coin that's in your, in your cryptocurrency uh, portfolio or wallet uh, you can send some to me because I made you laugh. And, uh, even, really, if, even if you're not on Myriad, right, Danny? So that's the thing. Even if I'm not on Myriad, and this is this is um, some kind of breakthrough, and and I have to give credit for uh, to this ID um, for this ID to Pandu because she came up with it. This is fantastic. You import a post, so I make you laugh on Facebook instead of making you laugh here. Right. Um, and what's uh, what's going to happen is like you can import my post right into myriad just this post uh, to to begin with and um uh at this point um i am going to you are going to send me a tip okay you import my post you send me a tip i'm not on myriad yet i'm not on myriad yet but as soon as i get on myriad i can verify that i'm actually the author of this post and receive the tip. So that's going to be a, a fun surprise if you send me 10 bucks, but that's going to be an even more fun surprise if a thousand people send me 10 bucks. Like uh, John Marriott and, and go on holidays. Right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a scenario that's uh, that's actually uh, that's actually possible. And, it, and, and it's, not, it's, not, it's not platform yeah. specific. So if somebody likes a funny tweet you made a year ago, yeah. and they also like a YouTube video that oh. you did, Exactly. Then, you know, they like a Facebook post that you did. They can tip you for all those things separately, and then, then you'll know what your, you know, if if you're a content creator, you'll know what your audience likes, and you can incorporate all of that into one. Yeah. yeah. So, so Pen, let me ask you a question. Now, this may relate to Myriad Social as well. Uh, how do you get people to come on board? How do you get people to stop being gun shy and give it a chance, or give any of these applications a chance? Right. So here's the thing. We, we're trying to build on the network effects of all of these. Uh, and I'm speaking not just of the Bio network, but also of Myriad Social. Um, the, uh, the idea by network effects is actually to have a network that builds itself and uh, builds itself from all the actors involved. Now, the why we actually incorporated tipping and basically mainstream social posts within Myriad is to basically get people to get on Myriad in a way that is more organic. So where like uh, the crass way to do it would be to pay people to get on the platform. That's not what we're doing. We're creating a way to people on the platform to, to give appreciation to people that are, that are not yet on the platform. So we created a mechanism, uh, well, Danny's team created a mechanism, which is an escrow system. So it grabs like all the tokens that are, that are put in like that tipping wallet uh to your account and uh that is held there until you actually sign on now the network effects part of this uh means that uh, like someone who's not on myriad has the honest has the incentive to actually come on myriad even if they don't know it yet and uh yeah. like for bigger for bigger like people with bigger followers a uh, large follower base elon musk and all those other people um, they, uh, their fans would actually send them like tokens, like probably NFTs, a lot of those, uh, weird tokens that they've created custom made just for Elon. 
um, and 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 just send them to these accounts, to the social media accounts, even though they don't know uh, Elon's Ethereum address or Elon's Substrate address, for example. Um, right, right. And Elon gets uh, these. He might not know it because the wallet <laughs> isn't his yet. But like right. there is also an incentive uh, from the people who are tipping to actually get Myriad, uh, get him on Myriad, because when uh, I think Danny would explain further on this, okay. uh, when you actually tip, you get rewards if that yeah. person if the tip lands, if the tip, uh, if the tip oh. basically, yeah. So um, yeah, Danny, you can explain further. I so guess. it's like a gamification almost that like you give people yeah. it is a encouragement to interact. Like, yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, any any modern process from from urban planning to uh, to app design is is gamified right now. Uh, it's it's nice to give incentive to people uh, to to do things. Uh, anyway, um, so first off, I would uh, like to start by saying that I'd rather Elon Musk tip me than me tipping Elon Musk, but that's a personal preference. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that said, uh, yeah. So you know, when you participate into a system, uh, you you passively or actively maintain the system. Uh, you can see it in, in in games, for instance, video games, right? When you have an online uh, video game, you look at the community. How many people are playing together, right? Because when uh, you jumping uh, jump in an online match, you want to be playing with someone. Right, and the value of the game is the value of its community because you're not going to play Fortnite or PUBG or something if there is no one on the servers. Right, right. It's these are battle royale games. I, that would be right. that would be a, a bit uh, counter uh, counterintuitive. So, at this point, it's the same for the plat for platforms for communication platforms. If you don't have users, you don't have a product. Right. Uh, and at this point, and especially since uh, everyone and, and the grandma can have a server and a node and, and maintain the network, uh, they, they, there need to be a fair redistribution of incentive and control and um, for, for everybody that participates in giving this value to the platform, right? So when you're going to do something meaningful, something that supports the, the network effect of this platform or support its infrastructure, you're going to get a reward in the form of uh, the Myriad token. Mm -hmm. So if I tip someone, uh, I get Myriad token. If I import a post uh, and then this post gets tipped uh, later, I will get Myriad token. If I host a node or a server, I will get Myriad token because I help Growing the uh, the environment. And at I this just wanted point, to build on. Oh, sorry. Ahead, before, be, before we get too far off, what what uh, Pandu said, uh, she was talking about you know the the Elon Musk getting the NFTs or the or tipped or whatever. But but I think I think it's even better for the small you know the smaller person that maybe has one you know uh, um, viral post, right? You know you get you know you you make a really good zinger at at somebody and everybody likes it and. And you know wants to tip you and send you lots of tips, and then you build a following, and maybe they find your content that you did from years ago on a different platform by coming to Myriad. You know you, you know you, you had that one good post on Twitter, and then they come look at Myriad and see, oh, this guy has YouTube videos too, or mm. you know he does stand-up comedy or something as well, and then you know all of a sudden now you're you're getting booked for events or something like that, or or you're at least getting tipped, right? Something. <laughs> Right, that's what I do. I didn't say comedy. Like my jokes, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I like well, your jokes. <laughs> I, just don't play I gotta go make through them now. <laughs> well, in 2021, and, and I think now more people are understanding than ever before, but there's a lot of ways to go. Uh, this is where I'll wrap this up. Andrew, let me ask you, what do you think that it's going to be the next step for NFC acceptance or using applications quite like your, your, your applications now moving forward? <laughs> So moving forward, we got to look back a bit. Uh, NFTs have been around for a while. Like the concept itself was created in 2014. The technology, uh, like the current technology, the current dominating technology, I should, sh should say, because there are multiple NFT technologies, was in like 2018. And um, we've been doing a lot of stuff with NFTs. And uh, we've been doing it for supply chain. Uh, my company, my other another company has been doing it for carbon credits tracking 
we've been doing a ton of stuff with it. Um, and only lately, like, uh, it's been trending. Uh, people know about it. And of course, it's because of the rise of digital art. It might be because we're cooped up in our homes for the last 18 months. Um, so a lot of people, their first exposure to these NFTs are from like the stuff that the media shows, which are focused on the digital art space. And the digital art space is amazing. Again, I am an NFT curator. I, I run a gallery, a virtual gallery of ours, but like it's not just art. Uh, there's a ton of other stuff as well. Um, bioinformatics, genomics, biomedical is my field. And that's why I'm trying to do like that, uh, the decentralized bio network. Uh, but there are other fields too, your demonetization of your private data and um, all of the other things that are, um, that we've been doing again, that's something we've been doing before NFTs became a thing. Um, right. So um, bills of plating, uh, boring stuff like that, LCs, uh, letters of credit, uh, all of the good stuff. Um, these are, can be nft and make sense if you NFT it. Because again, in NFT, I said like in the last podcast that NFTs are just certificates of ownership and uh, that then the history of ownership of an asset class. So usually it's a digital asset, but if you connect it to the real world, then it becomes a certificate of ownership of a real thing. It can be a certificate of ownership of a document. So a lot of, a lot of these things will come to the fore uh, in the next few months. Um, whatever happens to the art side of the ecosystem, I think it's still gonna grow, of course, but like uh, that part is unrelated to the way that NFTs can be implemented. I'm very excited for the future. I think our two companies are just like the beginning of this, of this new wave. And um, yeah, we'll see a lot of new ones in the coming, um, coming weeks even and we welcome it so glad you guys were able to stop by today i learned so much more about the different advanced applications it's beyond just a nft of a picture or a song this is like the next wave if you're not if you were if you were new to what i was <laughs> you know what i mean so i would love to have you back the future to talk about even more things in this space i am just full on but thank you so much for joining in as if everyone wanted to connect with you or sign up or become a member of either mirad social or even uh, the bio network how to go about doing that so um, I'm, I'm going to answer for the Debio network. Probably Danny and Josh can answer for Myriad. Um, you just go to the Debio.network. Uh, we're still setting up the company in Singapore. Uh, Singapore allows us to uh, receive tokens as payment. So once that is set up, you, it is actually going to be live. And you can actually sign up to the marketplace as a lab or sign up to the marketplace as a user who just wants his or her genome sequenced. And uh, yeah, so just the bio network is our main site and there are telegram groups, like papers, all, and all the good stuff are there. Cool. Hey, Marriott? Well, for Marriott, we, uh, we do have a website, uh, myriad.social. And um, you can just go there, take a look, uh, join the telegram group, uh, take a look at the demo. And uh, if that floats your boat, well, welcome on board and enjoy the ride. Yeah, you can you can um, already uh, import some of your social media accounts there. So, to, you know, instead of having to post to, to post specifically, you can start out just by importing your your other social media accounts into there. So you already have all the content there for people to look at. It's available now on iOS, Android, both. Right now, uh, this is web. So okay. you'll have to uh, you'll have to to access it from a, a laptop, a desktop, or um, or tablet, mobile version. But uh, everything everything mobile is coming very very soon. Great to hear. Thanks for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you, Fava. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you.